don't get me wrong. It was nice being able to wear pajama pants all day long, but uh, <laughs> I missed interacting with people. A cartoon of a man sitting at a computer typing on a keyboard. The view zooms out and we see dozens of other identical men working in office cubicles. The screen goes black. The words working blind appear in green, typed out as if on an older style computer. Hey you guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. So today I'm starting a new series and we're calling this the Working Blind Series. And this will be a series of interviews with really cool people in the VIP community who are working. And they're gonna share their stories of what they do for employment. Now, the reason why we are doing this series is because over the years I've been asked so many times, <laughs> what kind of jobs can blind people do? And that's in really an impossible question to answer. I usually tell people it's actually easier for me to tell you what jobs we can't do. That is a much, much, much shorter list. <laughs> but in an attempt to give you guys some inspiration, we're doing this Working Blind series. So every other day in December, I'm gonna release a new video, a new interview. But today we're gonna be starting with a good one because we're interviewing me today. <laughs> I promise I'll have real people on in the future ones, but today you just you just got me. Okay, so I've got a list of questions. These are the same questions I ask everybody in our interviews. First one is introducing myself and talking about my vision impairment. So, hello, my name is Sam. I have Stargardt's disease. I was diagnosed at age 11 and have continued to lose my vision ever since 30, what, 36 years now. Stargardt's disease, if you're not familiar, it's a loss of central vision. It's, it's very similar to age-related macular degeneration. So we lose our central vision, and but we retain our peripheral vision. Um, our colors are slightly affected, and we are night blind. If you'd like to learn more about me and my vision story, or more about how I see with Stargardt's, I will link both of those videos in the description down below. It's been a couple years since I got it tested, but at the time, my acuity was 2400 in my left eye and 2850 in my right eye. All right, next question, what do you do for work? So I have two jobs currently. Um, number one is I'm an assistive technology trainer at a nonprofit. I run the AT program at that nonprofit. So uh, I, would, I work there two days a week and it's pretty much working with clients, uh, teaching assistive technology, doing demonstrations, evaluations, trainings on both AT devices as well as accessible software. My favorite thing about working there is number one, people uh, we've got a great group of people in the office. I have I have a lot of fun every time I'm there, but it's also working with the clients. Um, back in 2018, 2019, I took about a year and a half off to to work with another company, and I worked from home. And although I, I enjoyed working with that company, it was a great company. Um, I didn't love working from home alone all day. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it was nice being able to wear pajama pants all day long, but uh, <laughs> I missed interacting with people. And I definitely missed working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, helping them improve their lives through assistive technology. So uh, I went back to work at the nonprofit in 2020 and been there ever since. The other job I have is this right here, the Blind Life. Blind Life is an LLC. And so it is a pretty much just about a full-time job, uh, creating content for social media, working with companies, doing evaluations, product evaluations, doing uh, individual one-on-one -on -one trainings, speaking events, traveling, all of that. It's, it's a, it's a full-time job. But as I've said many, many times, I love it. I love building the business. I love the channel. I love interacting with, with all of you guys. I love meeting amazing VIPs when I go to these events, these conferences and stuff, getting to meet people one-on-one -on -one and hear how uh, in some way, either whether big or small, some way my channel has helped them get through their vision journey. Uh, that's, I love that, that's fantastic. And of course, a little bit selfishly, I love playing with technology. So being able to uh, test out all these products, sometimes being one of the first in the country to test out a product even before it's come to market. It's so much fun. I love it. <laughs> Next question is how long I've done that job. I've 
started at the nonprofit in 2016. Um, I started as a volunteer and working with vocational rehabilitation in my state. They got me a position there as a volunteer just to see what would happen. And um, I guess they liked me. They liked my work ethic and the fact that I, I came there every day and was eager to help and get in there, get my hands dirty and, and do whatever needed to be done. They really liked that. And then they also recognized my, my knowledge and my experience with assistive technology and how I interacted with the clients. And so they offered me a position. And that is something I always recommend. It's something that in, you'll see in other interviews that I've done in this series, we talk about this also, is volunteering. Volunteering can be a great way to get your foot in the door of a company or an organization to hopefully, hopefully that will lead to a permanent position. Even though you're not getting paid, it still shows initiative, it shows motivation, it shows that you're serious about it, that you want to be there and do the work. And uh, employers, p potential employers, they love that. <laughs> as far as the blind life, I started that in 2013. Um, my, my blind life journey is pretty well known, I think, at this point. I've talked about it many, many times. Um, once again, check out my vision story if you want to learn more about that. What kind of training or education did you need to do your job? As far as assistive technology, a lot of my training is just real world experience. Uh, I've been using assistive technology since I was in middle school, uh, all through middle school, high school. I have a pretty good knowledge base, I think, of just technology in general, like consumer electronics and that sort of thing. Now, that being said, with assistive technology training or becoming an assistive technology specialist, there is formal training education you can do. So you can go that route and become a certified assistive technology specialist. And the Blind Life obviously started out as just my YouTube channel. No real training there other than just starting the channel and figuring it out as you go along. That's really what I recommend most people do. Uh, you can study, you can train, you can, you can practice, you can do all of this, but until you just start doing it, start getting videos out there or start getting podcast episodes or TikToks or whatever you want to do, that's when you really start learning how to do it. That's when you really find your own style and all of that and get really good at it. So it's all about experience. Now, the blind life as a business, uh, that also just figuring it out as I go, doing a lot of research, um, a lot of uh, going to the University of YouTube and, <laughs> and seeing how other people are doing it. And then, of course, knowing when to reach out to the experts when it's a topic that subject that you don't know enough about. Uh, for example, uh, getting things trademarked, all of that. That's when you call the lawyers because they know what they're doing. <laughs> Next question is, what kind of accommodations do you use to perform your job? Uh, guys, I, I can't, if I tried to list out all the accommodations I use, this would be an hour long video. Um, I'm trying to keep it short to begin with. But um, so for my work as an AT trainer, um, a lot of these things are crossover too. So a lot of the things I use there, I use for creating my my YouTube channel content and running the blind life business and all of that. So things like the accessibility on my computer. I'm a Windows guy, so I use Windows Magnifier, Win Windows Magnifier Reader. I'm here at the house, I have a 43-inch 4K Samsung monitor. This thing is a beast, and I love her. <laughs> at work, I am currently using a 32-inch Samsung TV as my monitor. That's a, only a 1080p monitor, although uh, we will be upgrading those very soon, I believe. Um, and it works okay for me at work. But here at home, you know, when I'm doing my video editing and all of that, and I'm watching Netflix and stuff like that, I really wanted to give my eyes as much chance to see the image as possible. So that's why I went with 4K. It's the best image we've got right now, other than like 6K and 8K, but those things are crazy expensive. And that's also why I went with the 43 inch, because for me personally, and for a lot of low vision users, uh, bigger is going to be better. I also have a large print keyboard. I have great lighting in my office to help me see things. 
Um, I use my smartphones. I carry both an iPhone and an Android. Because I'm a trainer, I need to be able to use both of those systems. So I carry both. And of course, I use the accessibility options on those devices. I always have my magnifier, my little Eschenbach magnifier within reach. It's a 10X magnifier, pretty strong. At work, I have a CCTV next to my desk. Uh, it's just an old Merlin, uh, nothing special. I'm a cane user. I have several different canes that I use for different situations. I primarily use my cane for identification. It makes my life so much easier when I'm out and about. I don't have to try and explain to people my vision impairment all the time. Uh, let's see, what else? I use special accommodations when I travel, uh, when I go through the airport, I get help finding my gate. I've got a whole video about how I travel independently. What else, what else? More and more stuff. Uh, when I'm creating my content, my main camera is the Sony a7 IV and it has actually has accessibility built in. It, it, believe it or not, has a screen reader built into the camera, which is bonkers to think that a, uh, professional or a, I guess a prosumer grade camera would have a screen reader built in. All right, we'll leave it at that. I, I use a lot of stuff. <laughs> but actually, one more thing about accommodations, not really an accommodation, but I always tell people that the best thing you can do is to be an advocate for yourself in whatever situation you're in. If there's something you need, then you have to ask for it. You have to be confident enough to ask for it. Next question is, did you have any jobs prior to your current job? And yes, um, I worked a lot in restaurants. After I got out of high school, I went right into the restaurant world um, and had a blast. I, I loved working in restaurants. So much fun, especially in your 20s. You can get up to a lot of trouble uh, in a restaurant in your 20s, but it's also a lot of fun. It's one of those things that I recommend everybody experiences you know, at some point in their life. And so then I went to work at, in the kitchen as a prep chef. Uh, sometimes in the mornings, but most of the time I'd come in mid shift and then work through night and close, making all the food, getting it all ready for the line and everything. I never did. I, I did a little bit. I dabbled in line cooking here and there, but that wasn't really my specialty. I was more back of the house, you know, support staff, getting everything ready. After working in the kitchens, my daughter was born and I became a stay at home dad. During that time, I actually got a job as a cake decorating instructor working for Wilton. Uh, yes, that's one of those things that people are a little surprised to hear about. But I did, I did. If you ever go into a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels and you see that they're offering cake decorating classes, that's what I taught. I taught those classes. And that was a lot of fun. I even did had a little cake decorating business on the side making cakes. So that was a lot of fun. But that job, just like the restaurant work prior, um, they basically ended because my vision progressed to the point where I couldn't do the jobs anymore. And it's not that I couldn't do them. It's just that I, at the time, in my 20s and later, I didn't have the tools uh, to do the work. I wasn't really plugged into any assistive technology at the time, very, very little anyway. I also maybe didn't have the best skills to advocate for myself at the time. But I mean, a lot of that comes with experience. Okay, and then last question. Um, are your coworkers accepting of your vision impairment? Of course, at the nonprofit where I work, we're all blind. So yes, absolutely. Everybody is super accepting and um, accommodating and all of that. No issues there. The blind life, yeah, of course. That's what it's all about. So no problems there as well. When I was working as a cake decorating instructor, uh, I was pretty upfront right at the beginning of each class, each uh, session, I guess you could say. Session was one month long, four classes. I told them right at the beginning. I said, you know, kind of, hey, thank you, welcome, thank you for taking the class. Just so you know, I'm visually impaired. It's going to be become obvious as we're working, you know, when my face is three inches away from the icing. <laughs> it's not a big deal, but I wanted to let you know. So there weren't any questions. Working at the restaurants, uh, most everybody knew. Restaurants, a lot of people come and go. So not everybody knew, obviously. But um, the people that mattered did, like my bosses and stuff. And nobody cared. Uh, nobody really cared. And that's what I found in most of my life experiences. Nobody really cares. It's more important 
what you do. It's more important how you come in every day and you work hard and you show up and you're a pleasant person to work with. Attitude is more important to attitude and working environment is more important to an employer most of the time than production, you could say. I mean, that's that's important to them as well. But if they had two employees, one was visually impaired, maybe could do about 75 percent of the job, but was a joy to work with, friendly, great attitude. And then employee number two could do 100 percent of the job, but was just kind of a grump all the time. Yeah, they're going to they're going to roll the dice on number one every time. <laughs> so, like I said, with most things living with low vision, it's all about attitude. OK, guys, and that is it. That's where we're going to leave it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode one in this new series. Once again, I'm putting out videos all month. So if you are watching this in the future, then check in the video description for the Working Blind playlist. And that way you can get caught up on all the other ones you've maybe missed. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel. If you have any comments or questions, leave those down below also, and I'll do my best to help out with them. If you feel that you've gotten some benefit from my videos and my channel over the years and you would like to give back and help me out, then please consider becoming a member of the channel just like all of these people here. <laughs> these are all members of the blind life. All the information is down in the description below. Becoming a member gets you some extra perks, including the opportunity to jump on a monthly Zoom call with myself and other members to sit and talk about whatever. <laughs> it could be assistive technology, it could be blindness. Sometimes we just talk about how cold it is. <laughs> But whatever we talk about, it's always a lot of fun, and it would be great if you could join us. But that is it for this one, guys. Thank you again. Sam with The Blind Life, I will see you next time.